What's good, everyone? It's your boy, Salos, back again with another Monster Hunter World video. Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something, okay? Pull up a chair, get your favorite snack, get a, crack open a cold one, because I'm about to tell you guys a story, okay? And this story, I want you guys to pay attention to dates, because dates are very important for this story, okay? In November of 2023 okay november 19th to be exact in november of tw of in november 19th of 2023 i will say that one last time because <laughs> i don't know if you guys, you guys you guys really understand on november 19th of 2023 we had our first encounter with Alatrion. Okay. And I believe that the World Series went on hiatus around October-ish. Because I know that the timeline went. I remember this because I remember that I was editing the Shari Isvalda video on the way to my uncle's 50th birthday party. And his 50th birthday was in September. So around August, September is when I fought Charlie's Valda in game. And I was editing the video in September. And then I posted the video in October. So that's the timeline when everything happened. I don't know what we were doing in the meantime in game, but I think that, actually no, I know exactly what I was doing. I was pretty much just taking the time off to quote unquote edit. That's also when I was doing the Raging Brachiadea stuff. I was fighting him in the background because I was say I said in the video that I was, I was supposed to be editing, okay? And obviously I wasn't. But yeah, but on November nineteenth of twenty twenty three, we fought a Latreon, and <laughs> oh. Oh boy, uh, I don't think the video essays, I don't think the playthroughs, I don't think the review bombing have done this monster justice, okay? I don't think Electron gets enough hate, <laughs> okay? Okay, let me, let, me be, let me be a little serious for a second. But I want you guys to understand, I'm actually, I'm actually stalling because so I'm actually looking for a specific DM because we actually had to recruit help because the three of us were not able to do it alone and we had to rely on you loyal viewers to help us out. So on April 13th of 2024, that is when we beat Alatrion. So November, okay, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to count um, December and January because a bug was out of the country, so he was traveling. So we didn't we didn't actually fight him in November December. So I'm just gonna sit to, I'm gonna sit to January because January January is when we started again. So November, January, February, March, and April. It took us five months. Okay, almost half a year on this monster <laughs> okay do you guys understand that do you guys understand we were stuck on a monster for half a year i don't even think i'm pretty sure yeah um to become a full stack web developer i'm pretty sure that program was four months i became a, a web developer for coding sooner than I beat a Latrion, and I really don't know how to feel about that. So, if you, I just want you guys to understand that, if you talk to my fellow hunters, DP, Q Mark, whatever you want to call them, or a bug, they are entitled to their own opinions, okay? And I will not hold them to any positive or negative feelings towards this monster. Because I feel this is the most controversial monster in the entire series. And I understand why. 
Okay. So, me, I was fully aware that Alatrion was going to be arguably harder than Fatalis. I hadn't looked at much, because like I said, this is a pseudo-blind playthrough. Because if you guys if you guys are stumbling across this video, like the algorithm did the algorithm things and you found me, hello, my name's Salos, happy to have you here. But I didn't start this in the Return to World campaign. I want to say that I started Monster Hunter World almost two years ago at this point. So I've been playing this game for quite a while, way before the whole Return to World campaign resurgence. But this has been a pseudo blind playthrough because I've started my journey with Monster Hunter, actually in 4 Ultimate, but my story with Monster Hunter goes about every other song and dance. Your first Monster Hunter game is never your first Monster Hunter game. If you know, you know. So my quote unquote first Monster Hunter game was 4 Ultimate. Tried it, hated it, put it down, forgot about it for six, seven years, picked up Rise, absolutely loved it. Here we are five years later. So that's that's been my story with Monster Hunter. And that has been a lot of people's story with Monster Hunter. Actually, no, that's been five years because Rise came out in 2021. So 22, 23, 20, so three years later, here we are. Big whoop. Got you. That is a pretty big deal. Three and five years is a pretty big time difference. But yeah, so just being a part of the Monster Hunter fandom for at the time about two years or so. Yeah, you know, hear a lot of things, and I heard the World versus Rise debate quite a bit, okay? It, it kind of got suffocating as to how much people just opened their legs, pulled down their pants, and just took a giant old dump on, on Rise, and that's a discussion for another video. I will reserve my thoughts for when I get around to that. But I've heard about... Furious Rajang and how he was controversial. I heard about how Raging Brachidius is the best hunt in the series. I heard about how Fatalis was probably the best monster design, the best fight design in video game history. Not just Monster Hunter, video game. Like, people sung their praises to about Rise. I'm not Rise. I wish they did. <laughs> but people sung their praises about Alatrion. Not a, can I focus? Can, can you just focus, Halo? People sung their praises about world as a whole. But the one thing that was always a 50-50 toss-up, and, and even, even going into this fight, I didn't know how people stand on this, that Alatrion was the one monster that no one could collectively agree upon. So... When you, if, if you guys do go back and watch my playthrough, I will link, because I did both the World and Iceworm playthrough, I'll link both of them in the description down below, but you should see an iCard for at least one of those playlists on screen right now, but if you go through those, that's why some of those are like genuine reactions, because I didn't know, like for example, no one talked about Valhazak, so I did not know Valhazak was a monster, no one talked about Namiel. So I didn't know that Namiel was a monster. So there are some genuine surprises that I didn't know about, but that's why I said, that's why I don't call it a blind, blind playthrough. Or did I, did I um, title it a blind playthrough? I think I did. But yeah, it's like a pseudo blind playthrough where I knew about the high points, but everything else was kind of ambiguous because I didn't ask questions about world. I wanted to, I wanted to experience it for myself, but I have gone 10 minutes into this and I haven't even voiced a single piece about how I personally feel about Alatrion. So let's just not delay anymore. Let's get straight into the meats and potatoes and not stall any longer. Okay. So before I talk about Alatrion, I know I'm stalling again, but I promise this is going somewhere. So this is just my stance on video games in general and bosses that people very openly say that video games nowadays are easier, that the games back in the 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s were a lot harder than the games that come out today. And the counterpoint to that is that no, video games are not harder, you're just, you were just a stupid kid. And now that you're a grown adult, 
because we grew, we we were kids, we've grown up, and most of us are adults. That we are just more experienced video game players. So those games that you thought were hard as kids, if you were to go back to them now, they do not hold up, and they are not as difficult as as you remember them as. That's cap. Okay, okay. So some of that is true. Like, I will say, like, probably Pokemon is probably the best example. Yes, Pokemon games, you were just a stupid kid. But also, there were things that made the games intrinsically harder. Like, for Pokemon specifically, like Pokemon Yellow. There, there were just moves in that game that just flat out did not work. Or there were exploitable, there were exploitable things, or those games were just not as well made as video games are nowadays. So, I think that those bugs and glitches made made video games harder and or easier but ultimately developers have come out and outright said that they make their video games easier that that you don't you can fact check me that all you want i'm not gonna go through that i know but i know i have heard that that they have outright said that video i think that was pokemon specifically that say they said that they that they do make their games easier because at the end of the day they want people to finish their game. You you bust your balls probably years, like years of development. Of course you want people to, to see the end credits. So they're not going to focus on the harder difficulty. They're not going to focus on making a hard boss that you're going to get stuck on or a boss you're going to rage quit on and then you don't finish their game. Why would, a develop, why would a developer not want you to finish their game all the way through? That's just idiotic if you think that. But yeah. So, you also take into account that video games are, at this point, video games are the biggest form of media. I think that they're even bigger than movies now. So, you have a saturation of video games. And if you're a PlayStation owner or an Xbox owner, you, you know games go on sale like candy. You can get games for 99 cents on the Steam store. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have a lot of games you saw on sale that was 90% off and then you just scooped it up say oh i can just play it whenever like video game saturation is a thing so they're already now they're fighting for your time and then you're gonna make video game bosses harder and you're going to present obstacles for the player that they may or may not overcome that's just a risk that developers are not willing to take because at the end of the day they want you to finish their game. They don't want you to rage quit. Why would they want to rage quit? Because then you're gonna talk, then you're gonna go to your friends. Because nowadays, you know how we are, we're on the internet. I can't remember the last time I saw a, a, a video game ad outside like a Nintendo Direct or something. Pretty much everything nowadays in a digital world, word of mouth is how your games or how anything gets promoted. So if you're bad talking a game to your friend and you say, oh, no, don't play Monster Hunter World because there's that monster in there that's going to steamroll you. You're not going to be able to get to the end credits without spending hundreds of hours trying to grind for a perfect set and playing it frame perfectly. Oh, wow, that sounds miserable. I'm just going to go over here and play this other game instead. So there is a risk factor to making hard bosses. So... I took all this I took all this time to set this up to say that I applaud developers who take that risk because honestly it's a needless one but if you do it right then you make then you make the player think or you make the the player understand it and I guess I could go into it now cuz I've done all this setup so Here's how I feel about Alatrion. If Alatrion was the final boss of World, or even the final boss of Iceborne, I probably wouldn't feel the same way that I do about him now. Because for all intents and purposes, Monster Hunter World Iceborne ends with Shari Valda. For all intents and purposes, that's where the game ends. All of the other things, Raging Brachydia, Furious Rajang, all those were additional title updates to enhance the experience. And it's pretty safe to assume that if you've 
If you're still playing the game after the end credits roll, you want an encore. And if you want an encore, you're not the average player they're concerned about. Because the average player, as soon as the end credits roll, they're going to put the game down, say, wow, that was a really good game. They're going to have positive memories about it. And they're going to say, wow, go talk about Monster Hunter Iceborne to your friends. Or, wow, Monster Hunter World was a great game. Then they had this expansion. It was so good. The monsters felt so unique. The boss fights were so, were so immersive. The world was so was so felt so alive the monsters actually thought it was a great game i highly recommend it and those players those players are going are not going to have those experiences with the latrion or those experiences with, with fatalis because they ended the game on shari Valda. not now whoever i'm talking to right here us we're the hardcore audience we're gonna see the game until the final curtain call so we're going to see the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're the ones who have thousands of hours on this play file. I have Neofall Fate Talos, and I'm already about to hit 900 hours in, in World. I am not the average player. Oh, okay. If I'm making a video about it on YouTube, I am not the average player. Okay, so if I get anything wrong and you are the average player, actually, I don't even think that the average player will even see this video. But if by some... Imag by s by some miracle, if you are the average player that has like maybe under 100 hours in World of Niceborn, then please let me know if, if I'm hitting the nail on the head or if I'm just completely off basis. But I think that for us, we, we yearn for that challenge. So do I think that Alatrion might have pushed the boundary a little too far? No, I, I really didn't. Because at the end of the day, it forced me to become better than I already was. And this is one argument I've heard. I'm not, again, I didn't play this game when it was live. But I was, a while ago, they actually did do a Monster Hunter poll where they voted for the most popular monsters of all time. And Alatrion made the top 10. I'm, I'm not sure if he made the top 10 or the or top 5, but he was in the top 10. And that surprised the crap out of me because I was like, I thought people hated this monster, right? I thought that they didn't like him. I thought that he was, that he review bombed world, that he was the monster that kept the world from, world from getting a perfect score. So why is he in the top 10? And the answers I got, at least for the people that voted for Latrion, which apparently if he's in the top 10, that's quite a few people. But the overall consensus, I was, gen I was genuinely curious. And the overall consensus was that I know what it looks like if you're from the outside looking in, but it's one of those moments where you had to be there. And I know a lot of you guys played this game when the game was live, so let me know how accurate I, I am on this. But people said that the Alatrion experience, it was like a universal struggle. You all were literally going through your, through, a, through your literal pain arc. That you all were united by pain and suffering. And it's, it, was, it was a moment where it took a village where all of you guys came together and found out, oh wait, he inflicts Dragon Blight when he slams his horns down, but we need to do elemental damage to make sure that we can meet the DPS check. Or if once, we, once both of his horns break, we can't stop him from shifting the elements. So if we don't beat him in X amount of time, he's going to shift to the element that we're, that we're currently using and we're just locked out the fight. We can't do anything about it. And Exxon Judgment is is dependent on if we meet that DPS check. So all these guides and all this information that's out there now, you guys didn't have that. So it took all of you guys piecing things together, going in Discord calls, late night, late night, um, Friday night hunting sessions or hunting lobbies, that you guys were sharing information and you all were helping each other. Say, oh wait, maybe if we have, I'm not, I'm just using examples. Please don't take any of these strategies to heart because I barely know the monster myself. But maybe if we have a Lance user take the full brunt of the force and we have a dual blade user in the back to focus on DPS because um, because dual blades hard focus on ele elemental damage. And then we have a range user to snipe the horns. If we can do, do that, then maybe we have a chance at actually meeting all these criterias of the fight and it's just one of those moments that when you guys finally figured out the hunt when you guys finally had that monster hunter moment 
where you had where you finally understood how to use your weapon how to bring out the max potential of your weapon and all of you guys worked together in unison overcoming that hurdle as a community was a feeling like no other which is a feel which is an experience i am so envious i did not get a chance to experience but when it, when people explain to me like that i understand how you made top 10. i understand why this is probably one of the most controversial monsters that will ever exist uh well knocking on wood if um, maybe wilds might have something crazier than alatrion i want to imagine what could be crazier than alatrion but yeah and there are people on the opposite side of the fence that as I've been saying for the for the rest from the for the how am I recording for for the other twenty minutes of the video on why this monster is hated and like my friends a bug and DP I'm not sure where their stances are but I know that it's not leaning in the this is peak monster design category so I understand why people would be frustrated with this monster but like I said all things considered. I don't have too many issues with the Latreon because he's a post-game fight. He already, he demands mastery of the game. And if you're in title update four out of five and you're three, 400 hours deep and you're already not the average player, I think expecting challenging you on a deeper level than they challenge the average player isn't a terribly unfair request from the developer. So, honestly, I think that he's fine. Do I enjoy the fight? N no, that was, there are a lot of things, personally. I could talk about some of our own personal struggles. Because while we didn't have that community aspect, even in our own hunting group, we had hurdles we had to overcome. We had DP, Dark Pit the Smasher, who was very aggressive, almost too aggressive at times. That he was reckless, that he just kind of charged in, and then he would end up getting one shot for it. And we had to pay the price because we only have four stocks. Shout outs to Feline Safeguard. But if he got one shot, that's one of our four cards that now we feel pressure that we had to play perfectly. We have my friend Abug, who is a very defensive player. And because he likes defense and waits for his openings as they come to him, that he's not taking that initiative. He's not going in and taking those shots. And he is not contributing to the overall um, counter before Exxon Judgment nukes us all. If we all get nuked, we all lose. I was learning a brand new weapon and charge blade. I didn't really know how to guard point. I barely knew how to charge my, my shield. And there were just some things that with dual blades, I just didn't even know how to approach the fight, if I'm being completely honest. I, he was just very aggressive. He was always flying in the air. So I couldn't go up there because dual blades have terrible range. So I just didn't even know how to approach the monster. So we all had our own personal struggles and all, and all those individual struggles were holding us back as a team. And until we all overcame our own personal struggles, because first you have to look in the mirror and say, what more can I do? How can I improve? Then, then you can lean over to your teammate and say, hey, DP, maybe you shouldn't rush recklessly into combat. Maybe you should let a bug over here, since he likes defense, maybe you should let him be on the for forefront and let him take the brunt of the attacks. And once Alastrion has a chance to land, then you let out a, a flurry of, of demon burst, burst. Or for me... You need to put on your big boy pants. We have to make that DPS check. I know you don't like Savage Axe playstyle, but that's your most damaging option as, as a charge blade. I don't like Savage Axe playstyle because you're a sitting duck. You don't, have, you don't have access to guard pointing. You don't have access to blocking, which is a safety net. But in that situation, I had to learn how to iframe. I had to learn how to learn his attack patterns and to just keep on the offensive so I can keep the, the damage going. Is all these own little personal things that we had to overcome as a group and we may not have that community over hurdle that that you guys had but we all had our own arcs and we all had to look out for each other that with especially with healing because uh, my friends do not play mmos so they really didn't it's not that they weren't paying attention to everyone else's hp but 
when it came to execution, that was a whole nother topic entirely. So we learned how to look out for each other. Like, oh, wait, Sales is getting low on HP because when he goes into his guard stance, he still takes tick damage. So let me go ahead and top off with the life powder. Oh, it's a good thing I did that because he was about to get one shot. It's just things like that that helped us work better as a unit. And I said this from day one I because I knew that it's a toss-up. It depends on who you ask if, if Fatalis or Elatrion is the harder boss of Iceborne. I've seen that discussion a lot. Okay? I've seen that discussion a lot. And obviously I haven't fought Fatalis yet, so I'm not going to weigh in on, on who I think is harder because I haven't even experienced Fatalis yet. But I can see how. But I said from the very beginning, before I even experienced fight for myself, I told my friends that Elatrion is the gatekeeper. He is the monster to make sure that you are prepared for what Fatalis is about to throw at you. That if you cannot overcome Elatrion, you don't have a chance in Hades against Fatalis because he is one-shot city and there are some parts, if you do not break his horns or if you don't do this or you don't do this before this type of fight, then you are just locked out of the fight and you might as well just return from quest. So... Overcoming this hurdle gives us a little bit of a confidence boost going into Fatalis. We'll see if Fatalis proceeds to respectfully humble us again. But he made us better hunters and he made us a better team. So I applaud that. I don't think if, if you're forcing me to become a better player and a better, a better teammate, how can I say that's a bad monster design? Do I think that is stupid that he inflicts Dragon Blight? Of, of stats that, mind you, takes away your elemental damage in a monster fight that requires elemental damage to meet a DPS check, then yeah, that's a little frustrating. But if you, you better pop some null berries or you better just bring blight resistance and then just, or just suck it up. Like there are answers. Everything that he throws at you 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 are in the end game. You are literally you have literally fought every monster in the game. You have every resource available to you to overcome these hurdles that the game is throwing at you. So I understand it. It's hard. It took us half a year to beat this monster. So I'm not shaming anyone who says that they hate Alatrion or anyone that contributed to the review bombing of the game. Do I think that might be a little excessive? In my personal opinion, yes, I don't think one monster should should be so terrible that it tanks your entire experience of the game. A game that, you mind you, you paid for an expansion for on top of the base price. I think that if you're paying for the expansion, there's a pretty high likelihood you enjoyed the base game to buy the expansion. Because I'm not going to buy the expansion of a game I hate it. So it shows you already wanted more. But then one monster is going to ruin your entire experience. I think that's a little excessive. That's just my own personal opinion. Of course, you're entitled to your own. But yeah, for me personally, even if I did hate this monster, which I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think anything less of World. I wouldn't think anything less of Iceborne. Because the entire experience, the entire package was so well done. It's kind of like Soul Eater, where it had a terrible ending, but the overall story was so good, you could kind of forgive the ending in a sense. And I feel Electron is the same way. That is that different strokes for different folks. That some people are going to vibe with him and some people aren't. But with everything else I've said in the video, that I've been content with Electron. I've made my peace with him. And now I can... I actually was going to put footage of me soloing Electron, but... I was cooking today and I accidentally cut my finger. So if I put too much pressure on, then it my feet, my finger is in is excruciating pain and it might start bleeding. So we're not gonna do that, okay? So, um, yeah, you guys are probably looking at my first, but well, not our first, but yeah, our first and probably only win against. No, we fought him. We beat him a couple more times. But yeah, our first kill against the last year, so I think you guys are looking at it, maybe some B-roll footage in the background or whatever. But normally, I'd break these down into general thoughts, fight design, weapons, armor for a general score. Honestly, I haven't... I have, we've just all been 
in a Latreon recovery mode. If I'm being honest, we've, we've all just needed a break from world. So, yeah, I haven't had a chance to test his armor. I don't know how good his armor is. I know that it has dragon resistance out the wazoo, which is very, which is very impactful against Fatalis, and that he has max dragon attack. But from what you guys should be looking at the at my build on screen right now, this is what I was able to craft from the armor. So I think this is a pretty good in-game armor. I'm not sure if it's gonna top Raging Bracky or if it tops the Safi armor. But it's a pretty good contender as a as a late game skill or a late game armor. But I'm not gonna go too too in depth with that because I don't have too much practice with the armor, and I don't want to just make guesses when I could just go in and experience it for myself. So I'm gonna withhold on that. This is more of just a discussion about Alatrion because I know how controversial he is, and I just wanted to get my thoughts out there before I forget before I forget them. But overall. Considering everything I talked about in the video, I would give Alatrion an 8 out of 10. The reason I wouldn't give him a 9 out of 10 is because, well, well, 10 out of 10 obviously was perfect, and I don't think anything's wrong with the monster. If he's just controversial, I think 10 out of 10 is out the question. So the highest he could possibly get is a 9 out of 10. And the only reason why I, why I don't give him a perfect well, well, a 9 out of 10 being my definition of perfect, is that he still is soul-crushing, and that is not an experience that everyone wants to wants to vibe with. Even if you are a, a die-hard Monster Hunter fan, that I saw my friends like start to lose hope, thinking that we couldn't do this, that he was just too much and too hard. And not every video game player plays video games to be challenged. Some people have very stressful lives, very stressful jobs, or a very stressful house environment, and they just want to play games to have fun. They don't want that high-intensity challenge. But I think that I, I, I do vibe with the message to push yourself and become better than you already are. And when you do finally overcome that hurdle, it is a feeling like no other, and you will be so proud of yourself. And I think that... Outside video games, that's just a good message in life in general. But I do understand if that's if you want to if you don't want to have the game speak to you on a spiritual level, you just want to come home and play as a cat girl. I don't I don't know after you've been screamed out for customers for nine hours, then that's fine. And I understand that a latch channel is not for everyone, and that's okay. So for that reason alone, I can't give them a nine out of ten. I have to give them an eight out of ten. It's an acquired taste, but if you can just give it a chance, I don't think you will regret it. So that's why I give him an 8 out of 10. But I have been rambling for far too long, and honestly, I'm getting a little hungry. I'm going to try to cook again, and hopefully I don't cut my other hand trying to, because your boy is not a chef. So I'm out of good about it here. Thank you for going to my TED Talk. Again, this is just a springboard discussion. Of course, you guys are welcome to critique anything I said in the video, if I got anything wrong, if I didn't say something, or if I said something that might have, that might not vibe with you, or something that just was factually incorrect, let me know. This is uh, these, these discussion videos are not the end-all be-all. I am not the gospel sitting here telling you, this is how you should feel about Electrion. and if you feel any other way, you are wrong. That is not what I'm doing here. I'm just voicing my opinion so that I can come, even that I can come back to this and maybe my opinion will change. Maybe I'll come back and fight Latreon another 50 times and I'm like, uh, Salos, what were you smoking and where can I get some? This monster is terrible and you were wrong about just about everything. So, again, it's also for me to just come back and reflect on how I thought, I don't, I don't want to say immediately after, but I've had some time to think about Latreon. I've had some time to meditate and kind of let my thoughts simmer and this was the result. So, I'm not going to take any more of you guys' time. I'm about to get up out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Till then, deuces.